What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Today we've got a little bit of an impromptu video, obviously centering around the release of Darius Geis by Washington. And with that taking place, we just want to go ahead and break out the now updated situation in that backfield and what you guys should expect from it heading into the 2020 fantasy football season. Before we get into it, a quick reminder, check out the all new and updated website at alldaypigskin.com. Also get yourself a copy of the 2020 ADP fantasy football draft guide. Great value, everything you could want. Continuously updated, all the details in the description. If you guys enjoy, hit that like button and subscribe. But for now, let's get right into it. So by now, you guys have probably seen the news from yesterday, which led to the release of starting running back Darius Geist by Washington. Pretty much it boils down to charges of domestic violence surfacing and Washington wasting little time before cutting ties with Geis. And as you would expect, this has had some trickle down effects into that backfield and fantasy football. I mean, Darius Geis now all of a sudden isn't even an option, but the more interesting question is what does this mean for the remaining running backs and as expected the fantasy community had a strong reaction to this primarily in the form of support of rookie Antonio Gibson and his outlook for 2020 however before we jump on the Gibson bandwagon we do want to go ahead and break down the running back situation as a whole in Washington a little bit further so to get a more accurate picture of the Washington backfield, we do briefly have to examine what the projections were prior to the Geist release. And while there were some analysts in the fantasy community that were actually calling for us to take notice of Geist due to the possible upside, we here at ADP never really bought into that idea. In fact, prior to this, our projections for Geist were fairly conservative as we viewed him as the running back 34 in standard and PPR formats with an expected 700 rushing yards for six total touchdowns and 30 receptions for 200 receiving yards. Now, as you'd expect, there were a lot of reasons that factored into this, but the main ones of note involved, one, the presence of Adrian Peterson, along with other capable running backs that we'll mention in a little bit, a question mark at the quarterback position due to Dwayne Haskins, and us really not knowing what to expect from him. If you want to use 2019 as a litmus test, then it's not all that encouraging. An offense that projects to be one of the worst in the league. Also, game flow that would likely cause a prioritization on the passing game throughout the 2020 season, since we expect Washington to be trailing a lot and often. And then also an offensive line that ranked 29th overall per pro football focus heading into the 2020 season. So now the question becomes, how many of those factors have actually changed significantly enough to make us feel more comfortable about that Washington backfield? All right, well, let's start with the most obvious and examine that running back depth chart, which includes Adrian Peterson, who's been with Washington since 2018, and he's combined during those two years for 1,940 yards. Not bad for someone his age. You've got Antonio Gibson, the person that everybody is hyping up right now. He's a third round rookie that actually played wide receiver in Memphis. You've got Peyton Barber, who signed a two year, $3 million contract with Washington this off season. You've got Bryce Love, who was a fourth round running back selection by Washington in 2019. He was kind of viewed as a high upside running back, but he missed 2019 due to injury. And then finally, you've got JD McKissick, who signed a two-year $3.37 million contract with Washington this offseason as well. And on the surface, yes, obviously every single running back above can now expect a bump up in volume, which though will naturally happen anytime there's a departure by a team's lead running back. And even though Washington doesn't have an official updated depth chart, we assume that right now it'll be Adrian Peterson, Antonio Gibson, and or likely Peyton Barber who provide the biggest contributions. And while in the span of 24 hours, there's been a major hype up of rookie Antonio Gibson, like we've said, we have to question how valid this expectation really is. The reason we say this is because initially we actually view Adrian Peterson as the projected lead running back for Washington, kind of in a reprisal role from 2019, where he had 898 rushing yards, five touchdowns, and was the running back 28 and running back 33 in standard and PPR formats respectively. 
In fact, out of any Washington running back on our 2020 rankings, Adrian Peterson saw the biggest rise in projections, seeing his rushing total rise to 850 for six total touchdowns. And sure, Gibson also saw a bump here, but it wasn't nearly as significant coming in at running back 45 and running back 42 in standard and PPR formats respectively for a projected 400 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns, and then 40 receptions for 350 yards and one receiving touchdowns. So as far as the other Washington running backs are concerned, we don't actually have any of them cracking the top 50 at the position. And while you might call these projections conservative, how many of the concerning factors highlighted above have actually changed for Washington other than the release of Geis? And yes, Gibson does have good upside, but we just aren't sure that 2020 is the year he'll capitalize on it. The truth is, Gibson is a very raw player that even though might be very versatile, like we said before, was a a wide receiver primarily while in Memphis. Frankly, we believe that this is just one of those cases where the fantasy community is just a little too desperate to find another rookie running back that make, can make an immediate impact at a position that we just value a lot. While there's nothing wrong in that, our advice is to go ahead and pass on Gibson along with the entire Washington backfield, which is likely to be very inconsistent and employ a running back by committee. On top of this, the rapid rise in average draft position by the start of the NFL season could land someone like Gibson as high as a 6th or 7th round pick, which is pretty unwarranted considering the situation that we just outlined in Washington. For that reason, you should really look elsewhere for running back help in 2020 and look at Gibson primarily as a nice potential dynasty piece in a couple of years. So with that said, let us know what you guys believe to be the case in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree with this breakdown? Would you take a chance on this backfield and one of these running backs? Why or why not? Along with any other fantasy questions. And as mentioned before, go ahead, check out the all new updated website at alldaypigskin.com. Get yourself a copy of the 2020 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Great value, everything you could possibly want from top 150 overall player rankings and standard PPR formats, individual player bios, tiers, projections, and general fantasy advice. And if you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.